Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at a mini PC stick that is ultra compact, it can just fit into any pocket in fact, you just plug it into the HDMI port of any monitor and you're ready to go. So if you're super tight on space, it's about the size of a Chromecast, but inside we've got a full version of Windows 10 Pro Edition 64-bit along with 8GB of DDR3 RAM. Compared to earlier generations, like the Intel Compute Stick that came out a few years back that had only two, we've also got 128 gigs of built-in storage. Here's how it stacks up against a USB thumb drive, by the way, so it really is just super compact. Has dual band Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth built on in, and it is using a fairly entry-level Intel Atom Z5 processor. And we have just some of the specs reiterated again on the rear. So it comes in a few different configuration models. So if you want to pick it up in one of the less powerful variants, it can also be found for even cheaper. And inside we have, of course, just the mini PC stick itself, along with a quick start guide. We also have a included HDMI extension cable. So in case your monitor is uh, in a position where it's kind of hard to stick directly onto the back, you can also elongate the connection like so. And we also get a power adapter that is using just a standard standard micro USB port. In fact, it can work with any 5 volt 2 amp power source, so you can just use a standard micro USB cable, you can even connect it to a power bank and it will supply enough juice to turn on the computer. So taking a closer look at the design, again this thing really is quite tiny. Uh, the entire thing is made out of a polycarbonate plastic, which is slightly shiny and reflective. It's crazy to think that an entire Windows computer is squished into something so small. Just imagine in the early 2000s, desktop computers with a similar level of performance had to be in a tower form that would easily be 20 if not 50 times larger and heavier. So we've really come a long way in terms of making chips and components just smaller and smaller. Again, a full desktop in the palm of your hand. We have just the HDMI connector, which is gold-plated. Uh, this does have a few ventilation grills for the fan that has a bit of power that kicks in to prevent it from overheating, so it's not completely silent. And we have on the edge here a full-size USB USB 3.0 port, a second full-size USB 2.0 port, micro USB for power, dedicated power switch, and on the other edge we have access to a micro SD card reader, and that is pretty much it along with some other ventilation grills. So again, super compact, but I am glad to see that at least they have basically two full-size inputs and a memory expansion slot, although you won't find a standard auxiliary 3.5 millimeter headphone jack directly on here. Now on the back here we do also have some basic branding info and a few other everyday objects here next to a US quarter along with a standard AA battery pack. You can see that's about the same in terms of thickness, so very small. Let's take a closer look at the performance next. That's as loud as the fan gets, just as quick reference. In terms of booting into the operating system, it usually takes about a minute or so from a cold boot, which is decent, and in terms of the remaining memory that we have out of the box, there's roughly 91.2 gigabytes left for you to install applications. Of course, compared to a conventional larger desktop or even laptops, it's harder to upgrade the components of something like this, pretty much soldered on, so pick the version that you need. However, in terms of supplementing storage space, you can rely on a micro SD card or always an external thumb drive or hard drive. And then indeed, Windows 10 Pro Edition is included, so that offers us support for different versions of software updates like this uh, new weather widget. All of that is of course supported on this mini PC as well. Scrolling as you can see there can be a little bit jumpy at times, it's not as fluid as a more powerful machine, uh, but in general everything still opens uh, as you would expect. Now in terms of upgradability to Windows 11, that might be a little bit trickier just because of the, again, pretty entry-level specs and slightly outdated chipset that we're talking about. Though technically anything with an Intel 8th generation processor or newer should get a free upgrade to that new OS of Windows uh, later this year. Now in terms of other things including system navigation, as aforementioned, it's not too shabby. It is using, again, solid state memory, so at the very least uh, it does seem snappy enough in terms of just quickly opening up things like the file manager and uh, closing out of programs, things like that. We can jump into the web browser and take a closer look at performance. So we can see here how things do take just a split second longer compared to faster devices we've checked out. For things to snap into focus, you have to kind of get used to that, but afterwards it's not too crippling. It can still load the full desktop versions of most sites without too many issues. The 8GB of RAM means that you can open up a few more tabs. I could push around 
eight tabs or so in Edge or in Chrome, and it would still handle itself in terms of jumping back and forth. Take a closer look at the Passmark score. Again, this Celeron Z8350 scores just around 925, which puts it pretty much in the lowest tier of chipsets, which are still coming out on newer computers these days, but again, super energy efficient. And at least it is a quad-core chipset, but don't expect it to be a rival to more expensive units in terms of processing power. It's basically just enough, really, to get you by. Let's jump into a more complex page like The Verge and see how it handles things. So this is a site that is pretty heavy in terms of ads and video elements, so everything does take a little longer for it to completely load. But overall, scrolling is not bad when it comes to going back and forth between the page. And as a whole, you can still definitely read content and have an okay, enjoyable experience. Amazon, for example, has another tab that we have open, and it's being held in the system's RAM. 8 gigabytes, really without too many issues here, despite this also being a desktop site. Uh, so overall, not too bad, I would say. Now, when it comes to watching back videos, you should keep your expectations modest, although it advertises the capability of playing videos up to 4K. If you're streaming back content on YouTube or Netflix, uh, I found it to be more comfortable watching videos around 1080p for it to still load smoothly. You can see there, it will just sometimes buffer in between different frames as it's loading along. And in terms of the Wi-Fi reception strength, this part seems fair, at least for a mini PC that has everything enclosed in such a small body. At the very least, it is a dual band 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi, and consistently I was getting around three bars of reception, even if we're a little bit further away from the router at the moment. So it does all right, I would say, in terms of still getting a lock on the internet, that's not really the constraint, it's just the integrated Intel GPU for the graphics, along with a slightly slower processor, really is able to handle, I would say, full HD or 1080p resolution videos. But once you try to get into 4K resolution, that's when you'll start to get a little bit more troublesome uh, when it comes to the hardware built onto this machine, but not too bad. And as a whole, again, these full HD clips are still loading pretty quickly. Again, buffering is not too long either in terms of loading back these clips. So opening up some sample documents here, like Excel, you can see it functions just all right. Um, some of these scrolling parts do take a little longer to completely load or refresh versus on something that has a faster processor, but as a whole, it's still usable for sure, just to get some schoolwork or just some light work done on here for office presentation uh, needs. So take a little bit of patience in terms of everything loading up, but afterwards, what you'll want to do in terms of main text editing, document editing will still be handled without too many issues. And of course, it is running on the full version of Windows, so you have access to legacy programs, any executables, EXEs you can download on the internet will run on here just fine, including drivers, lots of apps, um, and also, of course, mobile versions of apps as well. If you want to try the Microsoft Store, including games and productivity apps, it's things that you can all find. Of course, if you're using this to play some games here and there, I would try to advise you to stick with cloud gaming when possible, so services like xCloud, for example, will allow you to just use the browser, and then as long as you have a reliable internet connection, it will be actually running the game on more powerful hardware instead of on the physical device itself. If you're trying to install games locally, very light games such as a chess, checkers, something like that. It has very simple 2D style animations. Maybe Minecraft will be okay, but anything more demanding than that, I really wouldn't advise. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Teriza Mini PC Stick. I guess the most impressive thing, at least in my opinion, is that A, the form factor being tiny. So if you want something that's ultra compact, basically to tuck away onto a monitor or put into your pocket when you're on the go, as well as B, having 8 gigabytes of RAM is definitely an upgrade compared to other mini PC sticks in the past, only having 2 or 4 gigs. So this will allow you to at least open up a few more tabs in the browser, a few more apps at once, and for them to still load all right. General navigation feels decent for the size of the computer. Things like watching back basic videos and light uh, document editing also work fine, along with maybe very light Photoshop, uh, touching up some images, but certainly I wouldn't use it for video editing. It could certainly have a slightly more powerful processor, maybe something a little bit newer, using an Intel Celeron chip or maybe even an Intel Core M series chip could also get this thing to be even better in terms of its performance, but that would likely also increase the price. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Teriza Mini PC Stick.